Andatzel. Seven years. That's how long I've owned my silver C55 here behind me. But did you know at one point I actually considered selling it because I miss rowing a manual gearbox that bad. However, when I learned from now my good buddies Dimitri and Alex that I could manual swap these things, it was a no-brainer when we picked this thing up with a suspected blown automatic. So, welcome to episode two of the Mars Red C55 manual swap. Quick interruption guys, if you want a chance to support the channel and I have a collection piece of the Mars Red C55, I released some new designs you guys can pick up at anderzan.co. Anything you buy helps out the channel and I really appreciate you guys' support. Thank you. Alright guys, and we're back for part two of the Mars Red manual swap. Here with Mike, we're going through everything that we have kind of sorted out and are beginning to prep. Just got the uh, slave cylinder on for the transmission. A couple E10 bolts, or three of them, and then your line will plug in over here. I actually found a uh, clip on line to AN4, so if you don't have or not able to find the factory lines, uh, you could run a stainless steel braided line like an AN4 from the pedal to here. But, anyways, uh, besides that, got our flywheel and everything here from Kangaroo's team. Good stuff, diesel disc and a pressure plate and then their custom single mass we've already got our bolts onto our starter ring don't forget to do this otherwise you're basically having this piece just hang on by these three dowels which is not going to last very long so uh, that is in there is a spacer that comes out but you don't need to reuse that that's on the front side of it uh, there's nothing behind so starter ring uh, is still in the right place as is so you just put the flywheel straight onto this as is too um, then we got our starter hold tool right there our ring hold tool and besides that already got all the bolts from the kangaroos team a little bit of thread lock i believe their instructions are in here but that is it we're gonna get going here shortly round two you ready yeah, yeah. And I got to get this intake manifold back on the car. Just rebuilt this separate video series, but got to get that back on so we can uh, put our starter ring, flywheel, and test fire this thing for the first time before we continue to move forward. I also did the rear main cover uh, and the uh, rear main seal. So that is uh, need to be checked after we started to just make sure. Triple check. Go from there. All right guys, uh, easy to not forget because Kangaroo Steam includes the specs right there for you. So the flywheel is 80 newton meters plus thread locker and pressure plate is 24 newton meters and go around, crisscross, snug them down little by little and then torque them down once they're all flat. What are you doing, dude? Recording you, I'm getting different uh, angles. All right guys, we're trying to put the flywheel and start ring in right now, uh, test fitting the bolts, so the bolts are almost like the exact length and we're worried about actually torquing them down so we're test fitting with these Nordlock washers shout out to Bellmetric they sent me these for free um, for winning something on Instagram I can't remember but anyways uh, we're testing and see what they feel like with a washer behind the bolt and if not probably gonna have to do what we did the last two mando swaps and make our own flywheel bolt length by cutting them down, so we'll see. Well, is it okay, Mike? What's that? <laughs> yeah, I'm doing fine. <laughs> All right, you guys. While I'm finishing up top, Mike is torquing down our flywheel bolts. We had to shave them down by maybe a quarter of an inch. So, anyways, getting those tight now. 80 newton meters, which we just had to convert on our torque wrench, 60 foot pounds. Remember which is which. <laughs> okay guys, uh, we got the intake manifold back on, air box is on, everything hooked back up, fingers crossed. Uh, I need to upload a new tune uh, from Josh for this thing, Mercedes Swap Shop of course, you guys know, and 
uh, yeah, gonna go ahead and fire it up after that. We have the flywheel bolted in, and you guys can't see it down there. But I'll show you guys once we're ready to start. I'll put the light down there, show you guys, spin it over, go from there. And we need a light. <clears throat> This is what I have to go through, guys. <laughs> this is also what I have to go through, yeah, to get <laughs> Just kidding. Right now. Thank you. <sighs> okay. Uh, where's your other light? That you had? Oh, that one. This one? Yeah, I was gonna put it. Yeah. Oh. I put it on the flywheel. <laughs> Zooming in at my butt, dude. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All right. But, but crack got her. Oh god. Are we good? Yeah. We're okay. I don't know. Fingers crossed. Hold on. Let me oh. go ahead. All right. It's been how long since I bought this car? Three months. Probably five. I don't know. started out. Oh my god. It looks like a charm. <laughs> Yay. We got it running. <laughs> Yay. <laughs> <laughs> Alright you guys, Mike had to take off, uh, thank you, big thank you to Mike for helping out, I got the beanie on still, but uh, we heard like a scary noise towards the end before he left, I don't know what it was exactly, um, but it could have been the fact, the starter you guys heard was super loud for some reason, well, silly me, I forgot that the starter bolts uh, were held in through some of the transmission bolts, two of them in fact. So, starter was super loud because of that. What is that noise though? Oh my 
what that is. All right, you guys. Well, this is not supposed to be an engine diagnose video right now. I was happy, but uh, now I'm trying to figure out what's going on. I have a feeling this intake manifold is going to have to come off because that's what it feels like it's coming from unless I find an obvious vacuum leak. I just tightened up all the bolts again for it. I am confused to be honest. Don't know what's going on. But I'm a bit worried to be honest about the intake manifold. Ay, ay, ay. Well, as far as manual swap part two, we're gonna have to wait to make some progress on that before I figure this out. I'll catch you guys later. All right, you guys, welcome back to part two of our Mars Red manual swap here. We gotta continue on, and just to clear up, we had a scare with the intake manifold. I messed up the gasket on it. On one side, I accidentally flipped it, and that's what was that weird issue was where it was like sounding kind of not great. And anyways, luckily, I just threw on a new gasket, totally sorted it out, you guys. Well here, so that said, we gotta go ahead and move on. And what I wanna finish off this video for part two with is our shifter install and our pedal install. So let's get to it. And also before we move forward, I wanted to show you guys the flywheel installed. Shout out to Mike for getting this done while I was finishing up the intake manifold. We did have to shave down the bolts a bit by about maybe quarter inch. Uh, so I'm gonna let Petio know from Kangaroo's team so they can adjust that in the kit for the C55. But besides that, everything is beautifully placed now. Uh, the kangaroos team always crushes it with the quality of everything you guys know that um, but yeah we're good to go on this front i'll put the clutch on i'll put the clutch on later but i'm not worried about it right now because we got a lot of other things to finish up before then all right you guys making progress in here on the shifter uh to get the center council assembly out it's pretty easy um two 10 millimeter bolts inside of the little pull-up compartment there are three 10 millimeter bolts holding our shifter base on all the little plugs you got to undo. Uh, and then there is, uh, I think they're like T thirties or T 45 or T forties. I mean, um, basically little, uh, Torx head screws that you twist uh, loose and lets these little hooks come off. Sorry. I can put some light here for you guys, but these little uh, pins, kind of locating pins, come loose. They attach onto those, so. Uh, and then the last two, there are two T20s hiding back there. One on that side and one on that side. You don't need to take out the ones that hold in the little climate control, just the two in the middle. And basically that whole assembly will come out. I just put it to the side so the wires can stay attached. That's like Tele-Aid and, uh, I, don't, I forget what else, comms and, I don't know, something else. So anyways, this is ready to come out. And now we got our nice fresh hole here to uh, test fit our shifter and I'm so excited. Let's go get that thing. And also guys, I know that this combination is a pretty desired combo to have, uh, especially with the manual comfort and sport mode, um, little shift control and the shifter specific for the AMGs. Uh, desirable to have, so if anyone needs it, let me know. I've already had a few people reach out to be honest, so I'll touch back with them. Um, these go for pretty good prices nowadays, um, so it'd help out budget of all the projects, etc. But I'm also happy to help somebody out that needs it. Otherwise, it'd probably be a good idea for me to hang on to it as a spare for the CLK for now, but we're also planning to manual swap that thing too, so I don't really need it. So let me know if you guys need it, just hit me up. All right, you guys, and time for our shifter. Big, big shout out to the Kangaroos team. This is basically a prototype model for the 203, and to me it looks like it's a perfect measurement. So we'll test fit it in there. It comes with super nice grommet, bushings inside, everything ready to go, and then 10 millimeter bore um, bearing right there at the bottom. And for now, I actually took my old silver C55 shift knob and basically just screwed it on by hand and threaded the plastic by itself. It was like the perfect diameter to just thread onto here and it's a nice and tight fit. I also have my previous shift knobs that I made. I have a white one right there and then a black one hiding back in the corner over here. So those I made um, out of Delrin. 
knobs that I just bought and put my own little set screws in or, or uh, bolts, I guess, whatever you want to call them. But let's test fit this thing in here, guys. All right, guys, I brought some lights in to make it a little easier for you guys to see, but let's go ahead and slide this thing in here. And yeah, buddy, we got a perfect fit. Everything lines up and the holes are notched. Oh my God, dude, this thing is gonna be so sick in here. This is so perfect. This is exactly what I want. It's like an OEM plus vibe. It's not like the cooler work shifter and the silver C55, which is awesome. But I just felt like it was a little bit overkill for this car and this build in particular. This is a nice, it's gonna be like a stock upgraded feel. Damn, this is awesome. Okay, uh, one thing I will do is I'm gonna make myself like basically a little rubber grommet um, to kind of keep this thing nice and sealed. Uh, it's almost clearing. I'll give them some feedback so they can widen this a bit, um, but pretty perfect as is. So I'll make something, like I said, I'll make just a rubber grommet that can seal all this down and then I'll keep all that foam in here that's one thing I regret doing on the C55, uh, silver C55 when I did it first. I like got rid of all the insulating foam and everything and that stuff's really nice, the factory stuff. So hang on to that you guys, even if you don't hang on to it for that specific build, just put it in a bin somewhere and keep it on the shelf because it's really nice stuff. You don't come across like foams like that, that are that nice except for the factory stuff. So um, yeah, this is looking good. We can basically bolt this down and put everything back because we don't have much else to do. So let me figure out what I want to do for a grommet and uh, go from there. All right, you guys, well, shifter is in. We know that that fits. I'm not gonna bolt it down yet because I want to make sure for clearance later on. Let me show you guys underneath. Uh, by the way, I think I showed you guys this earlier, but maybe not. This is the boot I'm gonna use. This is out of the coupe. Um, I'm not gonna be reusing the shifter out of there. So I just stole the boot off of it. And I'm basically going to cut this because um, this is a connected shifter. Uh, I'm going to cut this and basically sew it up to fit to length on here. And that way I can reuse my factory uh, trim and all that stuff. So show you guys underneath real quick. I want to check uh, what clearances look like down here. So on my C55, when I did the cooler work setup, uh, I actually had to uh, space up the shifter a little bit to clear. But I think we should be good with this one. Uh, with drive shaft clearance. If I do have to, it's not a big deal. I can always just uh, space up where the bolt holes are with a little bit of, uh, you know, metal spacer underneath the shifter base. So not a big deal if I do have to, but it looks like from experience, we should be okay with where the drive shaft's gonna sit. But that is why I will not bolt it up yet and wait until the transmission and drive shaft and wait until the transmission and drive shaft are in. Anyways, I'm done for the night. I'm gonna go ahead and uh, rest up and I'll catch you guys tomorrow to throw in the pedals. Well guys, it was right around that time in the video that I decided to move on to part three a little bit ahead of schedule. And when doing so, suffered a bit of a defeat. Went to install the transmission and unfortunately cracked the engine's oil pan. But thankfully, with a little bit of help, time, and R&R, &R, and an engine hoist, we got it repaired, and now we're moving on. I mean, it's just lighter. I don't know if better is the right word. But yeah, it's just lighter. different. But I tell you what, Wolf. Yeah, dude. <laughs> oh, no! All right, you guys, we got Andrew visiting Mr. Auto Informant here. Um, he dropped off some cool parts. We'll show you guys in a second, but... He just completed his E55 manual swap. He's running the stock shifter, and we were just talking about different feels with the uh, different flywheel assemblies, etc. So, yeah, this has ruined me. Okay. Yeah, <laughs> that's what happened when uh, Abdallah and Kyle and all them were at uh, before Leavenworth shut down the German drive or whatever. Yeah. They didn't believe, like, they were like, it probably feels like crap, and then they all got in one by one and, and felt it, and they were like, oh my god. Now they're, I think they're both running them now. I was gonna say, I think Kyle is for yeah, sure. Yeah. Uh, oh my God. But I need, when I go back down, I need to go see their cars because I feel like they might have set something up differently or something because oh, really? I know Abdallah was having issues with like rattling and then Kyle's was doing the same thing, so. Yeah, that feels so much better. Yeah. That is amazing. Yeah.
And this seat too. Yeah. See if it see if it has any juice. Oh, okay. Here, hold on. Let me tighten the. <clears throat> Probably not, but you can try. Yeah, we'll give it a whirl. <clears throat> Clutchy. Even though I don't have to, I know. Yeah, I know. I still do too. Way. Hey, try try it one more time. Let it go, and then. Sometimes it'll click over in the second one. <laughs> wow, you surprised me, C55. I thought it was going to be dead, dead. No, I'm not even recording. <laughs> Dude. No, this shifter feels so good. Sounds good. What's your exhaust setup on this? Uh, really? it's just, I asked you that yeah, on yeah. cars. It's just cut off at the, like, right before the diff. <laughs> so it's really and no secondaries, yeah. but it still has the resonator, um, stock primaries, everything. Yeah, it sounds really good. <clears throat> it hasn't been started up in like <laughs> too long. It's sad to admit. <clears throat> oh, yeah. it looks so good under here, though. Clean out of all of them. Yeah. Okay. Funny story. I was missing these two bolts because yeah. I deleted my bracket. Oh, right. And I didn't realize those are actually head bolts. This is part of the no head. Way. Look at that little winglet. Oh, my God. So, a, a mask. Okay. All right, guys. Uh, we were talking about it when we were about to throw these in the pedals. Andrew is the one who got them for us because we didn't want to uh, deem the coupe undrivable just in case. I was going to use the pedals out of that, but. He saved the day with many parts. So Justin, those ones are nicer than mine too. <laughs> the the ones in the coupe are nice. So really? yeah. Okay. yeah. And I bought a new. He also gave me the hard line. He gave me like he's basically sponsored my swap at this point because <laughs> <laughs> he has a, a, a pick and pull right next to him that just happened to have some really good parts pop yeah. up. So he gave me the hard line. I found one brand new. So I'm gonna give you the oh, brand nice. new one. It was off of uh, Auto Houses actually. It was like 35 bucks. Dude, seriously? But I didn't think it was gonna actually ship, but yeah. it looks like it just shipped, so. I mean, either way, I don't care which one you give me. No, that, I'll give you the brand new yeah, one. it's all good. And then, uh, besides that, yeah, I think there's been the clutch line, the pedals, and then all the parts you just dropped off right now. Another drive line, shifter, gas pedals for the CLK, because that thing's been having a dead pedal spot here and there, but um, yeah, gave them the tour around the ugly garage right now of Messy parts. Hey, this oh. looks like heaven to me. I have a gift for you if you need oh, them. Oh gosh. Do you need some of those? I don't have a car. That you don't have it. You don't. Okay. I was yeah, gonna say. I saw when I saw you making those. I was like, dude, finally someone's like. If not, I'll this. ship some to you. Yeah. 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 Once you get one that has one. Honestly, I need the <coughs> w, I need the W210 one on the front of the engine cover on those. Is it the I same as those? One. No, it's different. It's it's. It's a silver star. They all pop off. Okay. The solution is W222 trunk star. Okay. It's slightly oversized. Okay. So, like, it's fine, but somebody needs to start making it. If you measure it, let me know, and I can just make it out of the same oh, okay. file, probably. Oh, there we go. Right. Does it have mesh on it or no mesh? No mesh. It's just a okay. Actually, I have one that's uh, complete but broken. Like, it's broken in one spot. So, okay. maybe I'll take the measurements on that. Yeah, measure it and yeah. send it to me. I can make yeah, it for yeah, you. For sure. Yeah. Yeah, but that's so cool. All right, well, I owe Andrew some money on PayPal, <laughs> and uh, he's gonna come back, so be on the lookout. Yeah. He'll come back up with his Manuswap E55, and we'll do like a, a gallery walk and a drive comparing the different feels. I love it, yeah, Since dude. This one will be done by then. It'll feel like OEM plus-ish with the shifter setup. Silver C55 is a bit on the crazy side, but it still has a stock flywheel. And then we'll also drive to CLK and scare ourselves. Yeah. Um, and, <laughs> yeah, fun. and we can compare the E55 with the stock shifter too. So, yeah. anyways, thanks to Andrew again. Of course. See you soon. Yeah. <laughs> All right, you guys, we are back. It is time to wrap up this uh, part two video with the last few things I want to include in it, which is pedals and our clutch install. Uh, before we jump into the getting these installed, I actually wanted to point out something on the pedals, uh, 
yeah, before we throw them in the car and it's impossible to see. So on these pedals, the clutch master cylinder right here, it has these three pins, which are plastic. And when you take them out, you can see this is what the other side of that one looks like is this. It's basically, you know, push pin style pins and they just, they get beat up. These ones are totally fine. When they're like this, they hold, they're not an issue. But you can see, I don't know if somebody's changed this master at some point, but if we can see in there, that one is already mangled up. And what happens is when the car, you know, is vibrating over time, etc., using the clutch, pushing this pedal down, etc., this pin starts to slip out. And that happened on my Silver C55 actually like two or three times before I figured out how to get it to stop happening. And I thought, like, I thought something messed up. I thought I burned the clutch or something was going on because it basically had, like, no feel or it was barely engaging, whatever, because this was just not going anywhere. So what I'm going to do this time is I'm actually going to replace that with a bolt um, and a nylock nut because it doesn't get in the way. This is the top of the pedal, so, like, the movement of everything doesn't get in the way of anything. So I'm actually going to take this pin out. i got to replace this master cylinder anyways. So I'm going to find a bolt that will fit in here and just nylock nut it to make sure it is good to go. With the other pins, if I can get them out decently, then I don't think I'll have to do the same there. But uh, I can if I need to. I can put bolts in those as well from over on this side. So see what I need to do. But yeah, got to replace this before I put it in the car. So let's go ahead and do that. All right, guys, here we are taking that top pin out. And I can tell already that it's definitely not doing much anymore. Oh, yep. <laughs> so you can see, I, I don't know if this happens over time, just, you know, from where, or if somebody's taken this out before, but this is exactly how mine was. It was just to pieces, and it's just not being held by anything anymore. So I am definitely finding a proper bolt and I luck nut so this never happens again. And the other ones, just flat blade. And actually, let me get a set of pliers and try to get those things gripped up a little bit. Yeah, there's no way guys. I'm <laughs> I'm replacing all these with nylon bolts. I mean, nylon nuts and bolts, because it's just, yeah. I, I don't know how you could expect to get these out and not just completely shred them. So I'm not even gonna worry about it anymore. I'm gonna rip these off. Forget about it. All right, you guys, we're in the end. Hammer to punch is what did it, so now, Finally got the pins out, and we can go ahead and take out our master cylinder. And my replacement is somewhere around here, uh, Beck and Arnley one, I see it over there. Um, this is for sure the original, so that pin must just get worn out over time. You can see how long these pins are, so like I said guys, I am definitely replacing these with bolts and probably washers and nylock nuts. So. That is that. Let me go see what I have for hardware or if I need to make hardware run. All right, you guys. Well, I have a ton of factory hardware left over, but I got nothing that's going to work for this exact scenario. So I'm going to take these with me to the hardware store and we'll get a perfect fitting setup. I even thought about I could even just find some uh, cotter pins. So we'll see what's going to be the better approach, either bolt and nylock nut or just cotter pin with a little C clip or sir clip or something. But anyways, here is our Beck and Arnley uh, master cylinder unit. The reason I went with this one, uh, A, because it was available uh, at a really good price and uh, shipping time. I think this was like, I wanna say $30, maybe $40 shipped, I can't remember now, but um, it's all metal, which is nice. Uh, Beck and Arnley, I've used their parts before, I've always had good luck with them. And the cool thing about this one is it also has a metal uh, stem for the feed line you can see on the factory ones. They're plastic nothing wrong with them I mean they work and it's kind of nice because they have that little clip to replace that component as well 
Um, these ones, I don't know if these are probably probably not serviceable on that part. Uh, maybe there is. Maybe there's a bushing in there. You can pop that thing out. But anyways, I don't think it'll be an issue. And uh, like I said, it's all metal, so a little bit better setup. And I just didn't want to risk running this one. If the boot wasn't torn, maybe I would have. But tear right there, just, yeah, didn't want to. So I had a factory one somewhere. It's somewhere in the garage. But I could not find it for the life of me, so I just ordered a new one. So once I get the hardware store uh, equipment that we need, then I will get this in there and we'll continue on our pedal install. But for now, I'm going to go ahead and throw in our clutch because it's kind of the last thing left to do besides this um, and our clutch reservoir, stuff like that. All the little last odds and ends uh, before we get the actual trans in. So let's go ahead. I'll set you guys up under the car and get our clutch installed. And key thing to note, while things are easily visible, this is a 26 spline uh, clutch alignment tool. And I will link it uh, down below or pop up the part number. It's a Dorman part. And it's the same exact one as used on LS vehicles, LS1s. All right, you guys, camera is dying on me, but clutch is there. Got the alignment tool in. Gonna go ahead and get the flywheel, get all of our bolts prepped. Uh, for the bolts, they are 24 Newton meters. They have washers they included and a little bit of Loctite is recommended. Alright you guys, I'm pretty sure I showed you these before but these are the bolts that I am replacing the plastic pins with on the clutch pedal. Um, the ones that live down here are not that problematic but this one specifically I've already got it in place that is now the same thing just a different size. Um, this one is a real issue. It popped out twice on the silver cv 5 and it basically makes you think that like something bad happened to the clutch or the clutch pedal or something and in reality it just pops loose and then the clutch pedal and the master become separated or like hanging on by a thread and uh just doesn't work so that will take away that possibility and then i need to fit these through uh down at the bottom so i'm gonna get those situated and uh, go from there all right, you guys, with the little finessing, I was able to get those uh, started in there. Just got to tighten them down. The bottom one, the metal um, master cylinder, for whatever reason, is a little bit different, like, depth, I guess. Um, so I had to not oval out, really. I just had to kind of move the hole a little bit up um, for the bottom one, but it's still all super tight in here. It's not going to move whatsoever. Um, so perfect, like, bore. I did drill those out. I cannot remember if I showed you guys that or not, but I drilled out the master cylinder holes by like just a hair, honestly, to fit the, the hardware that I was able to find that was closest. So now all of these are a tight fit, a little bit of Allen and uh, wrenching, and we'll be able to tighten those down. And these are pretty much ready to go in uh, along with figuring out what I'm going to do with uh, hose assembly back here. And then Obviously we have a uh, clutch line to run. And thankfully, shout out to uh, Andrew, auto informant. Um, he gave me a line to use. And we also uh, have been waiting around so long that I actually have a factory line. So um, either one will work. Uh, I just owe him a line in return. Whatever one I don't use, I'll give it back to him. Um, but yeah, this is... Uh, what we got so next up have to do the painstaking job of uh getting this actually in so <laughs> i'll be removing the uh carpets and our lower panel and getting access to uh what we got back there also isn't it crazy this thing's still got the original amg floor mats and they're actually in really good shape still got the click downs and everything the interior on this car is impressive um you know, it's not perfect by any means, but like only a tiny bit of little wear marks. Like a lot, a lot of the stuff looks like I can get detailed out. Um, the only real suffering point is the back corner over there of the headliner, but that's also an easy fix for upholstery shop or me to do at some point. So um, yeah, let's move on. All right, you guys. Well, apologies. I haven't filmed a whole lot down here, but. Took off the bottom kick panel, it's just a bunch of T20s and a Phillips for the hood release. And then now I just got off this pin that goes into the brake booster to the brake pedal. 
you will reuse that obviously with your uh, clutch pedal and it has a little uh, clip that attaches on to this side so that will slide in right here but yeah basically just knocking everything out uh, you have three I believe they're 13 millimeter nuts holding on this bracket and fun fact Mercedes has used the same pattern for their brake boosters since like <laughs> the 80s so most cars clutch pedals bolt up uh, to any bends the only thing is it's gonna change like the depth or whatever so even though they fit they might work it might not feel that good for the car um, a lot of them cross translate but some of them don't so like we got a lot of pedals on the wall we got 203 202 um, 204 124 so they could probably all bolt into this car realistically but uh, only you know maybe two of them would feel somewhat right or in the right location and then you also have to consider the master cylinder on some of them is probably not going to be the exact same setup or the ideal spot so i know 204 pedals work and somebody um, has used those before on a c55 but we got two or three pedals so that's what we're going to be using but yeah let me get this assembly out of here and i'll catch up with you after all right you guys automatic assembly is out uh, there's a part number if you're curious about it. I have way too many of these sitting around. <laughs> if anyone needs some of these, let me know if you want a fresh set of uh, one pedal, brake pedal, or you want these off of it, let me know. I think I have like literally three or four sitting around at this point, but um, those will go in. However, I am not sure what I'm doing yet for my clutch line because this is the little kit that i got this is what i used on the e420 as well um, really nice little kit comes with everything you need but i don't know if this line is going to be long enough and the only place i really have the opportunity to sit this thing is right there which it works pretty well this is where the uh, little retainer for this used to live um, so it'll stay nice and solid there. I don't even really have to mount it. I didn't ever mount one on the E420. I let it just kind of hang out here. Um, but I don't know if the hose is A, going to be able to worm through all of this and B, if that hose that they supplied is long enough. And uh, if you've ever put one of these in, or if you haven't, it is a pain in the butt if you don't do this ahead of time like there's there's just no way to do it if you don't do it ahead of time so you have to attach the hose to the side before you end up sliding it in and i'll need to put like you know one of these um retaining clips onto the hose um once it goes on here so yeah it's gonna be a bit of a process so i think i'm gonna pick up a little bit longer um, brake fluid rated hose, but I guess I can test fit there this in there right now. It's, it doesn't need to be that long, I know that, but just with that little additional length and me probably having to like snake it through some of this, it's um, probably gonna need to be longer than this. So let me test it real quick and we'll see. All right guys, well good news. The supplied hose looks like it is gonna be just fine. Got plenty of length still on both sides so i'll be cutting that down to length um, but i think i can go ahead and um kind of soft mount it up for now uh, or just leave this actually i can just leave it routed up here um, i'll cut this side i'll leave the other side uh, not cut so i think what i can do is um, go ahead and set the pedals up down there so I can attach that fitting onto the hose. It's gonna be a tight fit because this is probably closer to 3 8 the barb on here. The actual like nipple part of it is probably a quarter, but that barb is a little big. So 
Um, use a little bit of de-electric de grease and I'll get a clip or a hose clamp something on it and uh, go from there, get it mounted up. All right, you guys, I was able to uh, fit our hose onto there. The barb actually comes out of the master cylinder, so that made it really easy. I was able to uh, take this out, heat the hose up a little bit and a little bit of silicone spray, slide it on. It is a super, super snug fit, so it doesn't even need a uh, clamp or anything like that. This doesn't really uh, see a lot of pressure on this side. It's basically just kind of gravity feeding into this. Um, so we should be totally fine. Um, and good news is don't have to go search around for a different hose or like a three eighths to quarter inch barb or anything like that. Cause that would just make life a little too complicated for this. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, snake this back up and get this situated and call it a night after I get this mounted up. All right guys, well scratch the uh, gator grip grommet idea. The hole is too small. This doesn't bend correctly. So <laughs> I got no grommets guys and I'm getting these pedals in there. So luckily that hole is pretty like uh, curved. It's very smooth. So I'm not really worried about it chafing, but just to be sure, I basically did two layers of this little nylon braided um, wire wrap. And then, so one layer of that and then electric tape and then another layer of it and another layer of electric tape. So I don't think it's gonna be any issues. This will still fit through there fine. So now we should be good. I'm gonna go ahead and get this installed. Move on. You guys, the pedals just literally kicked my ass. See my nose. <laughs> oh my God, dude. No way. Oh. Sheesh, I did not remember the, pe I did not remember the pedals being that hard to install. Oh my god. Well, anyways, just gotta zip down the nuts and the little, uh, uh, what's it called? I don't even know anymore. Pin. I was putting them in and I was holding the brake pedal <laughs> while I'm like shoving them in on my back, upside down, twisted like a pretzel. And then the brake pedal, I slipped off the brake pedal, brake pedal whacked me in the nose. Literally, instantly started feeling warmth of blood running down so yet more blood sacrifice to this car uh, but hey all in the name of good fun so that's a relief i had to take a break i literally was like i'm not doing this i'm not that was probably the most pain in the butt job of this whole car i've done i don't know why honestly i, I mean i remember the ped pedals being frustrating but that was like next level even the clutch line right now was difficult to get in but it's in everything is in that part of the job is done besides obviously bleeding clutch and fluid and all that stuff so i gotta trim this and um i'm gonna tighten this right now before i forget but yeah uh i'm beat i'm gonna go take a shower wipe my bloody nose off ice this thing <laughs> i've broken my nose probably three times in my life from playing basketball so i'm no stranger to it but um yeah that wasn't a nice little whack not broken but just a not a not a nice whack so i'm gonna go recover myself and i'll catch you guys in the morning What's going on you guys? Jumping in here to close out this video. Hopefully everything you saw was fairly streamlined. I'm sure I missed a few things here and there. So if you have any questions, please let me know. The clutch install, I had it all recorded uh, and I don't know where that footage went because I did it once when the motor was still in the car. And then when we pulled the motor, we decided to just do the flywheel and clutch while it was on the engine crane. So that's why kind of two different scenarios. Anyways, footage lost. Other things, uh, the shifter, obviously in episode three, you guys will see what I do to hook it up to the transmission and uh, you know what kind of shift knuckle I use and all that, but kind of painted the picture of what it's gonna be for you guys in this episode. Pedals are in and uh, yeah, it's ready to keep going. We are that close, so episode three, we'll tie everything together and go on our first drive. Hope you guys have enjoyed the series so far and uh, appreciate you guys' support. Catch you on the next one. Peace.